Hey, Terry, it's Sean. I got a little bit better service now. I, I realized there was a game open on my phone, so that's why I was having bad service. Okay. Why are you sad? Well, I'm just on my way. I'm on the road on my way to the vet with my dog. So I thought I'd call and check in on you. So how's how's your dog doing? The, the little white one, right? Yeah, he's not doing so good. But of course he's 14, you know, so he's, a, he's an old man. Yes, ma'am. So, you know... You're going to put him down or have him checked up on? No, just a checkup. I'm not good. sure he's at the point yet where he should be put down. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. I guess the vet will tell me when that when that time comes. Yes, ma'am. So, are you warm? It's freezing out here. Well, I'm uh, in kind of a, a warmer region in the United States. There's no snow here, ever. Oh, good. Yeah. Because here, um, snow is blowing across the highway so bad right now that it's really hard to even see the line. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, it's pretty tough. And the wind chills are below zero. I miss so it's that. It's a good day to stay home, but I have to. I have to get him there. I used to work in that kind of weather. That spot. Yeah, going out with the Jepsons, shoveling snow. Other Jepsons. Oh my gosh. Remember yeah. Them. Yeah, I still uh, talk to a few of them. I mean, they they probably did more for me in that town than anybody else. I believe that Natalie tried to kill her. Do what? But she loved that. Do what? I can't believe that Natalie plotted her own death. I can. She uh tried to go out the same way I did. Her friends and family made my life such hell that I was begging people to shoot me in the head over the internet. She got somebody to do it. I, I didn't. That's crazy. It is. I couldn't get them to leave me alone, you know? And I, I can understand why she was suicidal. I mean, she she already had those cut marks on her when I first met her. She'd been cutting for a while. Her dad had been doing things to her for a while. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I, I have all of that evidence. Just I couldn't get anybody to look at it. They called me mentally ill. And then I couldn't get anybody to go in with me in person. I had so many Facebook bans because everybody hated me because the way that I was painted on the news. The Boulder police did what they did because of how I was painted. I mean, they, they literally harassed me for a week straight until I had a nervous breakdown. And then they assaulted me for having a nervous breakdown because they still wouldn't look at the evidence that I had to show them. I mean, I've been threatened and harassed nonstop since I left Virginia. I know. But maybe now that you're away from that area, maybe you could just start fresh. Let it all go. See, I, mean, people... I know it's really hard because you feel, you know, like you need to, to get a, an attorney. But I honestly, Sean, I think it's best if you just let it all Put that, the past behind you that's the point over. is that I don't get to. I don't get to put the past behind me. I don't get to start over. I have warrants out for my arrest. My name has been creamed worldwide. I mean, I... I... So you do a, I mean? do a bunch of illegal stuff to get away from this? That's the problem. I, I've had to do illegal stuff to show the truth. I mean, I, I shouldn't have I had know. to break the law to begin I with. Know. If I change my name, how do I do that? You know, how do I change my fingerprint? If an officer well, sees you don't. me... you don't. But you don't have to tell people who you are. 
you know right. what I mean? When you encounter a police officer now, <laughs> they have an electronic scanner. They can scan your fingerprints and know exactly who you are. Right. As far right. as I get that. As far as changing my name, I would basically have to steal somebody else's identification and steal their identity. I'm not willing to do that. Well, you don't have to do that. You can go anywhere and legally change your name even. You can go to any courthouse and legally do that. That's right, but since I'm at the courthouse, legal, when you, you go to the courthouse, that you were, you know, go by you, your middle name or something. When when you go to have your name changed, they run you through NCIC to make sure that you don't have any warrants. So if I go in to change my name, that's basically turning myself in. So what are the warrants for? Um, one of the warrants is for uh, failure to appear in Nebraska. I couldn't appear because I was in jail. One of the warrants is for failure to appear in Larimer County, where I was prevented from going because I was in jail. And then there are all, there are probably also warrants out for breaking the protection orders that they were able to get because they prevented me from going to court because I was in jail. They served me papers while I was incarcerated six days before I was supposed to have court. You have to requisition to have it changed at least seven days in advance. I was prevented from doing that. In addition, the guards that were on duty and that so, day. So maybe the best thing, truthfully, is to just face those forms, get them taken care of, do your jail time, and get out. Just get it off of your back. Ma'am, what you're not understanding is that I've been without my friends and family for two years. People <laughs> telling me stuff like that doesn't change the fact that I should have a lawyer. I should have had somebody in my corner. I should have had family there to help protect me from these predators. I mean, me going and serving know, time Sean, in somewhere that, that I can't see my friends and family. I know, I know. We, we both know that. I mean, and that's a part of your life that really sucks. But, you know, nothing you do is going to change that. I'm aware of that. And that's another major issue is that people don't understand that I, I don't have the resources to do any of this stuff. And in order to get those resources, I have to let the law know where I'm at. All of these resources go through NCIC to see if you have warrants. Right. So, so get, rid, get, get them over with. Just go do it. Get it over with. Get your disability back. Start your life, Sean. You can't live your life on the run. I'm well aware of that. That's why I need a lawyer. I mean, these people aren't going to stop. I need to be able to see my loved ones. And that's difficult to explain to people who have their loved ones there. And maybe not all of them, but even no, just not. one. No, it's not. And, you know, Jason has gone through hell. And Jason is still going through hell. But Jason faced the warrant. He did his time. And now he started his life. So you have to do that. The the issue here is that they won't leave me alone. The issue here well, is that... Well, they're not going to leave you alone until you get it all taken care of. That's and the problem, is that I had to do to all these things to get it taken care leave, of. You know, just leave it all behind you. That's the thing, is that I can't leave it all behind me as long as I am punished for the things that I didn't do. I can't make this stop. It would be nice if I could just go serve the time, have it over with, and be gone with it. But that's not how it is. And when I'm done with all of that, moving on, moving on, moving on, I am tired of being told to move on because I, I'm I'm sick of it. I'm sick and tired of being okay. less than and a human a being. Yes, ma'am. And I know that not being able to move on is a high trait of autism. It's not and being allowed, nurse. though. That's that's the issue right here, is that a lot of people have these dictionary definitions that they're going off of. That's what got me into all this trouble to begin with. No, no, it's not a dictionary. I work with these kids on a daily basis in me the too. Brokenville Public Schools. I'm working and with they get some fixated here. on something, and they cannot let go of it. That fixation, and though. And so I'm saying that it's not your fault. And I understand that you can't move on, but I think a lot of it is, I just, I don't know, Sean. The, the thing for me is that I, for me, for autism, having a sense of security 
means that you're not constantly moving from one place to another, to another, to right. another. Once but this is all done and over with, it's not done and over with. Same. So, face, face it. Face I have been. In. That's the problem. Just turn yourself in. Ma'am, that, that's the, the thing, is that I did turn... Ma'am, ma'am, listen to me. I did turn myself in. Repeatedly. All right? People have been abusing me nonstop since I left Virginia. I all right? I me going and turning myself in again is just going to result in more harassment, threats, and intimidation. What the police officers did to me in those jails, nobody should be allowed to do. These things are going to continue happening to me until these laws are changed. Until people like me are seen as human beings. All right? The, the things that I've had to endure because people... I get it. I see. I see how people treat, treat each other and treat other people who they see as being different. I see it every day. And all I can do for them is to love them, you know? That's, that's all I can do is to, is to love them while they're in my school system. And then when they're out, you know, I just... And you know what's really sad is most of these kids, their families are fucked up. Yeah. Which makes them even more fucked up. It's a tough cycle to get out of. Like, most kids who grew up in the system don't grow up like I did. They don't grow up to try to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. They already know it's not going to work for them. And I already knew it wasn't going to work, but I tried it anyway. Because a lot of people with families, it worked for them. But I had to realize eventually that the only reason that it worked for them is because they had those families. But you know what? Jason has left his family. Jason yeah. did it on his own. And he, I have not talked to Jason or seen Jason for probably three or four years since he got out of jail and started over. There's a, a big difference between me and Jason, though. I know. There's I a know lot there of is. big differences. Jason's got a lot more disabilities, though, than you, you know. Well, I'm aware of him folding in half like an accordion as a child. You're aware of what? Him folding in half like an accordion. Yeah. But the the thing with Jason, I mean, I, I worked really hard with him to, to try to help him with his life. And every time that I helped him out, he wanted to be a jerk about it. And, you know, I give people the opportunity to change and the chance to change. like. With Jason Vote, you know, I gave him ample opportunity to change. He was always telling me about Jesus this and Jesus that. And then what he came and showed me, though, was his meth addiction. And then right. when he went, ended up with a lot of the mental issues that I have because of his meth addiction, I was like, dude, you know, as much as I want to make fun of you, like you made fun of me, the fact is I understand what you're going through. I, I was born with this stuff, though, so I'm better able to cope with it than he is. And, you know, I, I figured after we had that conversation that maybe he would at least leave me alone. If he if he wasn't going to see me as a human being after that, he could at least leave me alone. But that's the, the thing here is that I, I want to see my friends and family. And, and you're not going to be able to do that until you get the salt put behind you. That's the point, is that I'm not allowed to put it behind me. Even after the warrants, I can't go back to Boulder and see my friends and family without being threatened, harassed, or assaulted. I can't go back to Chapel, Nebraska without having to deal with that same stuff. You know, I don't have the money or resources to go traveling to all of these places. And getting this done with courts and allowing them to railroad me for things that I did not do or things that they forced me to do isn't going to change the fact that when I get out, I still have to deal with that. Meanwhile, I want to die every day because I can't see my friends or family. I don't get to hear their voices. Every single day, I want it to be over. And I, I keep hearing people telling me those pretty words and pretty memes, but I, I need, I need to be loved words. in real life. Do what? There's no pretty words to fix this. I know. Just, you know what? There's so many, I mean, okay, so you want to talk about Jesus Christ. He was murdered for things that he didn't do. He was, he, but he faced it. And I've been he facing it, it too. All. I've faced all of it myself as well. I've gone to every court date until they wouldn't allow me to go to my court dates. I defended myself against some of the worst predators 
like predators that you guys in small towns don't generally have to deal with. That's not to say that you that they don't happen. You know, I mean, what happened I to? I know. I I grew up in Denver. Right. I know. And those are things that I, I try there to monsters. explain to people. There's monsters out there. That's right, and a lot of those monsters are in control. I mean, I, I know so many good officers <laughs> who quit their jobs because you're not allowed to be a good officer. You're not allowed to have a conscience. You have to, if you have a crooked boss, you have to be a crooked cop. And it's That's terrible. That's why Michael became sheriff, because, you know, he doesn't want somebody that has poor morals to be above him. He was, he was really lucky because the man that was above him is a great man, but when he was in chapel, Jim Hayes, and under Jim Hayes, Jim Hayes was not a good man. Jim Hayes is not a good man. Jim Hayes did a lot of crooked, dirty, nasty shit that a lot of people don't even know half of what he did. Yes, ma'am. And Michael's seen that. Michael has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in the law enforcement, and he's He's making a difference, and I'm so proud of him for that. But it's not easy, you know? It's life, not. life is hard. Life is, is so flippin' hard. Whether you have money, whether you have a family, whether you have a car or a house, life is hard. Not having all of those things makes it ten times harder. Yeah, it's a lot easier but to keep it once hard. you have it. See, Brent Jepson, he's uh he was with the state patrol there in Nebraska. Now he's with uh the Sydney Sheriff's Department. Like I've known him since he was a little kid, you know? And uh -huh. like when it comes to officers who know me, they they outright refuse to talk to those officers to find out what's going on cuz I mean, Brent, I've worked with him, you know. I've cut trees with him. Yeah. I've I was raised with knows. them boys. He knows, you know what, Sean, when everybody was pointing their finger at you for Natalie, I was the first one to get on Facebook and say, bullshit, Sean would not do this. This is not Sean, he would not hurt anybody. Well, that's not those the way of, that I got those paid. Those of us that know you know that, that you are not capable of that. I didn't want to go through that. I didn't want my friends to go through that. You know, Candace, Candace was threatened with being thrown out into the cold with her kids for helping me by an officer in Haxton, Colorado. Like, that that stuff shouldn't happen. You know? I mean, I, I was told I could go somewhere safe, and I was going to come back when Detective Peterson called me if I had to, you know, testify in court. But... Instead, the Boulder Police prevented me from leaving state by assaulting me and charging me with felony assault. And everything after that was officers refusing to, to take a look at the threats and the harassment that were happening to me. And that has gone on to this day. Like, people want me to go face the music for stuff that I didn't do. I'm not willing to do that. I'm willing to face the music for the things that I did do. But I had to do those things because I was in an extreme situation. I couldn't get the cops to listen because they'd already made up their minds. Well, all you can do, Sean, is pray that they will give you an attorney who will listen. Yeah, and I noticed that that praying thing doesn't work nearly as well as calling. I've called a lot of attorneys and I've prayed a lot. The, <laughs> the biggest thing with most people and, and Jesus, I, I don't... I don't believe in God, but I do believe in Jesus, and that's tough to explain. Like, I, I take a look at Jesus' example, and I notice that there's a whole bunch of books about him. And, you know, most of the Christians I know focus on two or three little things that they have to really twist out of proportion to make that oh, the gosh, entire basis of their belief system. Yeah, like, all right, my friend Russell, I like his Jesus. I like Kim's Jesus. Like, probably one of the, the biggest things that made it tough for me to, when I was going through the whole religious thing, trying to decide what it is that I do believe, Kim is one of the people that I thought about. Like, you know, her Jesus is a, a loving Jesus. You know, he was a loving yes. man. He's not judgmental. He 
loves all of us. It doesn't matter. And, you know, that's what I've always said. You know, when people will say to me, you know, he's gay, that's against religion. And I say, no, hate is against religion. You know, God is against hate. I hate how so I you, feel. You can hate the sin, but you have to love that person. You know? I mean... See, that's how I love. I mean, even when Brandon disagrees with me, I still love him. Even when Kim was dating Michael McBee, I still loved her. And, you know, oh, that's God. the thing. Like, Michael McBee was a shit. You know, that whole situation with uh, Zach Metcalf happened over Brandon telling me that Mike McBee pulled her out of her car by her hair. He did. I don't know if it was by her hair. But he pulled her out of her car at Pumpkin Pantry because he had called her that day and wanted to hang out. She didn't want to because she had plans to hang out with her friends. So he drove to Pebble, hunted her down, pulled her out of her car, and um, it was witnessed. Yeah. Well, that got me into a lot of trouble when I got into that fight with Zach Metcalf. But that's what it was I don't over. Remember, I don't remember you getting in a fight with Zach over that. Yeah, it was uh, during the Veterans Day Assembly. It was right afterwards. We were tearing everything down. And uh, he came up and shoved me real hard over it. And uh, when he shoved me, I had a bunch of paperwork in my hand. I went to smack him in the head with it. And uh, everything went flying. I only smacked him in the face with two pieces of paper, the top piece and the bottom piece. But after that, Zach was always respectful to me. He always treated me like a human being. I just thought it sucked that it had to come to violence for him to realize that. Yeah. But, you know, like with Mike McBee, you know, being the, the son of a sheriff and all that, that was in Haxton too, you know? Yeah. And that that whole sheriff's department, the one who I had an issue with in January when I was at Candace's, his name is uh, Officer Michael Beard. And uh, he went and harassed Candace over a pocket dial from one of Natalie's stepmothers. And it really didn't sound like a pocket dial. It sounded like she was defending her life, you know? Yeah. And then before he even got the call, he was already smiling ear to ear grin, telling me that uh, I needed to get a hold of my local senator. I'm like, oh, my God. And that's that's when the 911 call went through from dispatch to him. I mean, I was already talking to him. He had already told me that, you know, and for me, trying to explain to people, this is stuff that homeless people have to go through all the time just because they don't have somebody in their corner. It's it's phenomenal. And then because of what yeah. I was accused of having Candace and her kids threatened, thrown out in the cold, and I couldn't get the officers to take a report about all the threats and harassment against my friends. And like, you know, I, I would have rather been dead than have my friends be treated like that, so I did try to kill myself. And I wouldn't have tried to kill myself if the officers had done their jobs to begin with. And that started with officers in Virginia, and it extended to the officers in Chapel, Nebraska. Well, Sean, I'm glad you didn't succeed. I'm not. Like, this is too much for me, not being able to see my friends and family, not having familiarity, having all these things that people want me to jump through as far as hoops go. I'm not allowed to defend myself and these hoops all cost money and they cost time and I I don't have either. I shouldn't have had to leave the state of Colorado to defend myself against police officers in the jails. And that's the whole point with people telling me I need to just go serve my time is that I've already dealt with the officers in these jails. I already know what they're up to. I already know what their opinions are of me, and they're never going to forget me so long as they live. I know, but at least you would have three warm meals a day and a bed, you know? That is not anything worth living for. I don't get to see my friends while I'm in there. I don't get to see my family while I'm in there. And that's what all this is from, is not being able to see my friends, not being able to see and my why family. why can't they come to see you? Why won't they come to see me? Most of them are too broke, too. I mean, Miss Peach is, she's the one who uh, was going to help me get a lawyer. I was still trying to get a lawyer to take Natalie to court and take people that I was living with to court um, when I found out that Natalie was missing. I mean, I, I was doing my best to try to, to make it so that I, 
all of my money was getting stolen. My disability money was getting stolen. And I... I, I don't... I don't want to live to be punished for the rest of my life for things that I didn't do. And most of my life has been punishment for things that I didn't do. Like, I didn't go into the system not? because I was a bad person. I went in because my parents couldn't stay off the drugs. I'm 38. So how old are you? I'm 38. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You're only 19 years older than me. Older? I mean, younger, sorry. I'm only 19 years older than you. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty old. Well, Sean, I just made it to my destination, but I wanted to make sure you were doing okay. I'm trying to. I, when you call it, it helps. I mean, <laughs> uh, most people don't call me out of the blue to let me know they give a shit. Most people... Well, I will, I will try and do that. I will try and check in on you at least once a week. Yes, ma'am. That would be perfect. I'll try to keep okay. my phone on. All right. You take care of yourself. I love you, Terry. You be safe. All right. Love you, too. Bye. Bye.